I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! Alright. Alright, so now we're gonna shift to go around the league right now. And... Oh god, this saga. I just want this saga to end. The Calgary Flames will be a key team in the Jack Eichel saga. This comes from a statement Elliot Freeman made this week. Anthony, we'll start with you. Yeah, and I saw that Freeman tweet how they kind of, you know, in the midst of it there for a while. Um, and I have no reason to doubt him. You know, he's one of the best. So I, I you know, can't really sit there and say he's wrong. Um, but realistically, I, I just, I don't, I don't see them being the team that gets, that gets Eichel. I mean, who... I mean, pr prospect wise, um, they don't have any really like standout elite prospects. Um, yeah, they have some younger guys. I mean, Sean Monahan, maybe some interest to Buffalo. Uh, then you have, you know, Elias Lindholm's a pretty good young score, but I mean, really, are they going to move him? Um, Goudreau is uh, set to be an unrestricted free agent, so I don't think he has much value to Buffalo. Um, I mean, Matthew Kachuk could be a key piece. He's a good young player, but I mean, no. Do they? I don't really see them moving him. Um, so I don't know. I just, I just don't, I just don't see it. I don't, I don't see it happening. Um, so despite what Elliot says, uh, and they were in it, I don't see them being players here for Eichel or, or ultimately ending up with them, I should say. So I'm going to say shot. Phil, shot for the same reasons. And uh, I, I believe it was Friedman himself that reported on the asking price for Matthew Kachuk however many months back. And they said the asking price on him was quote unquote astronomical. That was the exact word used. So I don't see how Matthew Kachuk will be available at all. Eliza Lindholm is another one that I don't think would be available. So what assets does Calgary have to acquire Jack Eichel with? Matthew Coronado, a first round pick and what else? Who, who else are who else are they sending they don't really have anything else to send and everybody's talking about oh well the rangers uh they all their prospects are untouchable even their next level down players like your craps offs and so on they're still miles better than anything calgary has right now to offer so i i don't see it I'm saying shot, and I'd be surprised if they were back in it again because Sean Monahan is going to have no interest to Buffalo. He has, I think, two years left on his deal, including this one. And I don't see how he would have any interest to a Buffalo team, especially with the two or three down years in a row that he's had. So, uh, shot. Let's make it a queen. Uh, just did it again. Let's make it a clean sweep again. <laughs> it's a shot. It's a shot. It's definitely a shot. It's um, there's no way you guys outline the prospects. Let's go from the Calgary side. They got less than a million dollars worth of cap space. How the hell are you fitting a $10 million player in there? You have to send Buffalo back. retaining. That, that ain't happening. And well, then Buffalo might, Buffalo might have to retain in, in a deal. If, if that situation arises, because remember Buffalo's got to stay above the salary floor. They're probably about, I think, four million or so from it. So they have to take back a significant amount of salary in any deal that they make. It, it, if they were taking back any salary, Jack Eichel would have been gone by now. And again, this is nothing. This is definitely nothing against Elliot Freeman. He's one of the best in the business. And uh, it's just, I, I just don't see it. I would love to find a way that it could happen. I don't think it's going to happen. So. We're going to move on. Uh, the next one. Spencer Knight will be the Panthers' number one goalie by Thanksgiving. John, I'll start with you. I'm going to say beer. Uh, I could be only because of the fact that I think that Sergey Bobrovsky uh, rebounds this year. They're going to have a better team in front of him. The defense is going to be healthy. I know Yandel's gone, but they're going to have a healthy roster in front of him. Mackenzie Weger has, has turned into one of the better defenders in the entire NHL. Aaron Ekblad will be back. Like I said, I know Yandel's gone, but they're going to have bodies that will come in and play good defense in front of them. A Anton Lundell, I think, will be over. 
I, I think that they're going to have a – you want to talk about deep forward groups? Florida's forward group is one of the absolute deepest in the entire NHL right now. We talked about Tampa's, and Tampa lost basically their entire third line with Goodrow, Col- uh, Coleman, and Gordon. Florida might have the deepest forward group in the entire NHL if it's not for maybe, I would say, Carolina and the Islanders. I think those are the three deepest forward groups in the NHL right now. So I I don't see Bobrovsky having another year that bad to the point where Spencer Knight takes over the job, but it's more than possible that in his time, in his games, that he shows them that they have to move Bobrovsky sooner than later somehow. So I'm going to say beer. Anthony. I'm going to go beer. Um, Bobrovsky could be pretty inconsistent up and down. The Panthers probably to them have cup aspirations or at least challenge to win the division. So Bobrovsky is being sometimes his erratic, inconsistent self. And then Spencer Knight's coming in and playing poise and winning games. Um, you know, he might force their hand to give Knight more of a share and goal. But um, I do think, like Phil said, Borowski probably will be better. Um, so that will probably be enough to hold off Knight for now. But, I mean, the writing's on the wall here. Spencer Knight's they're going to be their future number one goalie. They're going to probably kick themselves for being locked into that contract for Borowski. <laughs> it's, it's not good. And you, it's going to be really – I mean, when it comes down to it, if they decide to have to move him, that's going to be really hard to move him at his price tag. And the age, I mean, uh, I don't know <laughs> how they'll pull that off, but I, I think sooner than later they're going to have to make that decision. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go shot. I really like Spencer Knight, and I really think he's going to be – he's definitely going to be the number one goalie eventually. And maybe not this season. Maybe not really before Thanksgiving. Outside chance by Easter, uh, I would say. But – and they're going to give Bobrovsky another shot. Now, he did sort of lose his number one job to Drager last year, but um, it's uh, – yeah, I got to go with – I got to go with the, the shot on this one. Mark andre Fleury will keep the Blackhawks in playoff contention this season. I'll start this one, guys. Shot. Uh, I really like Mark andre Fleury despite how much – absolute crap i talk about him uh especially uh in the in the last six years but he's been he's the reigning Vezina trophy winner but you're going from vegas who was a stout defensive team with great structure to the chicago blackhawks and their amoeba style of play that jeremy colleton plays and it's um it's like a shooting gallery every single night god help the goalies that are in there I, I I just I don't think he, he I don't think he alone could 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 keep that going. They got Seth Jones now. That's good, but I just don't think it's going to be enough. And that division is very tough. So I went shot. Oh, Anthony. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go opposite here, my friend. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say round the reigning Vesna Trophy at his age. He still got the goods in goal. Um, you know, Seth Jones is there on defense. Uh, he's there with his brother, Caleb, some family ties there. Um, you know, the defense as a whole, it's, it's not the best, but I think Seth Jones goes a long way in stabilizing that. And then you also have Captain Sirius back in the lineup. Uh, he will help out, um, you know, so that will be a better team. Kirby Docks had an injury riddled year. He's another year older. Um, I think he's going to obviously chip in for them. Patty Kane's still playing at a high level. Um and then you have guys like Kurashev who had a really strong rookie year. Uh, you know, Dominic Kubalik is had is developing. Kubalik is going to really developing to a really good goal scorer for them. Um, Brennan Hagel, the rookie, also had a good year last year. They get these guys. They feel like they always have got plucked these guys out of nowhere that have come in and contributed. Um, so I think they're overall they're going to be a better team. And then obviously Flurry's kind of the icing on the cake there in goal because I know Lankinen was pretty good at times. But this is, you know, this is a cup-winning guy in Flurry. Um, just has that calm, that calmness about him. Um, you know, sometimes you, you see him smiling behind his mask. I think that goes a long way with the young guys on the team. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like more important, like I just said, I think he has a lot left in the tank. So, round. All right, Philk. 
I was initially going to say shot, but I was thinking about this and the way that you worded it. And I, I thought more about it as the both of you guys are speaking. And I, I, I'm actually going to say round because you're not saying that he is the reason. Yes. But you're saying he's one of them. And I totally agree with that. Because that top, that top four unit in Chicago, that defense corpse, is not good. It's Seth Jones, and then you have Connor Murphy, Jake McCabe, and mm. Calvin Dahan. Are you really expecting good top four minutes out of those three? I, I listen, uh, Connor Murphy's good. Connor Murphy's solid. But if Connor Murphy is anything more than a number four, you have some problems on defense. And same for Jake McCabe. Jake McCabe is probably a good number five, maybe a number four. And Dahan? he's been an injury case ever since the Islanders drafted him when he was playing in junior. He had, he had shoulder problems then, shoulder problems on the island. I mean, he, he seems to never, almost never stay healthy. So I really wonder about their defensive depth. But Marc-Andre Fleury is going to be part of the reason why that the, the Blackhawks stay in playoff contention. That forward group is really going to help them too. You look at that roster up and down or forwards. It's Taves coming back. Kane is still Kane. Then you have Dylan Strom, who could rebound, especially with the, the loaded talent that they have around them up forward. They brought in Tyler Johnson. Yes, I know Tyler Johnson is not going to be the 2015-2016 the Tyler Johnson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you don't need him to be. Then, you know, Anthony talked about Brandon Hagel before. You have Dominic Kubalik, who could still end up being a 30-goal a, a scorer, 50-plus point guy there. You, you have guys up and down that line of Kirby Doc taking the next step, which I think could happen. Anthony mentioned Phil Kurashev. I mean, Jujar Kyra brought in for fourth line minutes, and that's another uh, thing that Chicago had trouble with is bottom six depth last year and in, in previous years. They lack depth. Now it looks like, like they have more of a complete forward group. I think that forward group is very good. I think they're they're going to be an underrated group. I think they're going to surprise people. So between them and Flurry, yeah, I think those two things can help keep the Blackhawks – in a playoff race, I don't think they get a spot, but they can definitely keep them in a playoff race up until a later part of the season. As you mentioned, to Caleb Jones, I came back to the the thought uh, yeah. when the Edmonton originally traded him, uh, and the the thought was, "Hey, uh, we at least have your brother come play for us." <laughs> I was like, "That sounds more like a hostage negotiation than a recruitment." So, yeah. <laughs> all right. So. Uh, Cole Caulfield will score more goals than Kirill Kaprizov. John? Ooh. I like this one. This one's interesting because it actually really makes you think. Um, I'm going to say beer, but I'm leaning towards shot. Just because I think Kirill Kaprizov has the potential to put 40 up this year because he was on pace for 40 last year. And he's only a year more experience. He's going to have even more chemistry with Matt Zuccarello and, and, and Rask. And that that line is one of the better lines in the entire NHL. Kirill Kaprizov, the, Kirill the thrill, they call him that for a reason. So uh, I'm going to uh, I'm, I'm going to say I'm going to say shot. You know, I, I oh. think Kaprizov gets 30, 35, I think maybe even close to 40. I think Caulfield goes somewhere between 25 and 30. Anthony? Um, beer. But it, uh, I'm, I was close to doing shot, but I, I'm going to give Caulfield his due. Goal Caulfield, they call him for a reason. <laughs> um, the, guy's, the guy's got a really – for a small guy, he's got a really good shot. And he's got really, there. And, he, and he's got – He's got really quick hands, yeah. um, so that's not a knock on him. Uh, but I just think Kaprizov's that good. I, I would do bad things to have him on my team. Um, you know, he's <laughs> he's. Yeah, I got real dark real quick. Yeah, <laughs> and not, and not, uh, not only can he <laughs> score, but Kaprizov's Kaprizov's a, a a pretty good playmaker too, um, and he's just got that Panarin esque dynamic to him. He's fast shifty um and you know this is a guy that you know this i think he's the guy that some fans thought nikita gusev was gonna be like kaprizov is is that good he's he's uh 
Yeah, people got got it wrong on him. But to be fair, Gusev had a couple like I think he had like an eighty something point year in the KHL one year, and I understand why people thought he was going to be really good. But um, Kaprizov is that good. He's the real deal. We saw it last year. Wild fans could breathe a sigh of relief that they have him locked up. But uh, yeah, I think Kaprizov's going to outscore Caulfield. But Caulfield's gonna is gonna battle for the call of the trophy, no doubt. Yeah. Once again, the quote. Letter Kenny after Anthony said it to be far. So, um, <laughs> y- you know, something I'm going to say shot on this. Uh, and, and there is history of guys, especially first round guys that come in from the NCAA do well, and then kind of get there in the playoffs specifically and then get their first taste of regular season, and it doesn't work out so well. Fan club over there. Chris Kreider is the guy that I'm pointing to. He <laughs> went from he went from six goals in the 2012 playoffs to three, I believe, in two, 2013 in that half season. Part of that has to do with the coaching. Part of that has to do with his own play. And Ankle also injury. part of that, yeah, there's, there's so many factors that go in there. Caulfield's going to be on the top line, we think, with Suzuki. He will be. And so Foley. maybe 20, 25. I mean, that's not unreasonable to, to say that for an elite rookie. Yep. On the other hand, Kirill Kaprizov, I, I'm with I'm with Phil. He's going to score 40. So. Yeah. That, he's all sorts of ridiculous. And one other, th- one other little side note I'll say, just because – I brought his name up before and we're talking about the team is Matt Zuccarello just has such an uncanny tendency to be able to play with high skilled players and not look out of place at all. He just, yeah. he could fit with anybody you could throw him with. Yeah. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And that's why Ranger fans, we always loved Matt Zuccarello and he really, it took him to, Almost two full seasons to to realize his full potential. He really started coming into his own the final month of the 2013 season when yeah. uh, the Rangers acquired Derek Broussard. And then the after playoffs. that, yeah, and then the playoffs that year. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.